Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. First, let's look at the state of play in our war with the coronavirus. The president's daily briefings on the go-ahead to governors to open their states for business gives a reassuring sense that we are on top of things. We are not. The coronavirus is on top of us. Our number of cases is rapidly rising toward a million. We have as many cases of the coronavirus as Spain, Italy, France, Germany, and England combined. Laura Ingram on Fox TV says we should treat the coronavirus the way we treat the ordinary flu. We should not shut down our economy. But we've had more deaths in two months from the coronavirus than we get from the common flu in a year. Meanwhile, six governors have formed a coalition to reopen their commercial establishments, including spas, massage therapy studios, tattoo parlors, and barbershops, all places where we have to toss away social distancing and are forced to let people touch us and, even worse, breathe on us. From the eagerness of these six governors, from the president's press briefings, and from the demonstrations of those who want to liberate their states from Democratic governors and from house arrest, you get the impression that the curve of the coronavirus has flattened. It hasn't. The curve is rising slowly in Italy, Spain, France, and Germany. But here in the USA, it is taking off like a rocket. In other words, of all the advanced nations, we have been the least effective at cornering and corralling this virus. The result is that the coronavirus is killing relatively young people, like 42-year-old Mary Lou Armour, a police detective in Santa Rosa, California, or Natasha Ott, a healthy 39-year-old social worker in New Orleans who died days after she was turned down for a coronavirus test because she was told she was low risk. Meanwhile, the anti-lockdown protesters, like the ones in Lansing, Michigan on April 15th, who called for locking up Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer, also talk about something called herd immunity. What's herd immunity? The best argument for herd immunity comes from conservative intellectual and historian Victor Davis Hanson in an article he published in the National Review at the end of March. Hanson outlined what he called the California Paradox, California has the biggest population of any state of the Union, 40 million people. And that 40 million is more exposed to China than the citizens of any other state. Most Chinese who fly to the USA land guess where? In California. And LA is the favorite Chinese tourist spot in the USA. What's more, California may have more vulnerable people than any other state. It has the most homeless, and the most living in poverty, 8 million. Yet when Hansen was writing in the last week of March, California had only had 140 deaths from the coronavirus. Today, California has over 10 times as many deaths as it did back then, 1,469 deaths. But that's a mere one-tenth of the 15,740 deaths in New York State, one-tenth. Is that because of the lockdown? Probably not, says Hansen though California was one of the earliest states to lock down. So how does Hansen explain the small number of deaths in California? He imagines that the coronavirus actually came to California in October, not in the official date of January. Then he imagines that many of the people killed by coronavirus in the late fall of 2019 in California were misdiagnosed as having pneumonia or what's called a type B flu. If the coronavirus did hit in the fall of 2019, he imagines, it killed those susceptible to it and left those who had mild symptoms or no symptoms at all with immunity. That's herd immunity, the herd immunity that protesters talk about. Hansen ignores new evidence that even after we've come down with a full-blown full case of the coronavirus and recovered, we still may remain open to reinfection. In other words, we may not become immune to the coronavirus at all. But Hansen's theory has important policy implications. It says, end your lockdowns. Open the economy. Let the virus kill whoever it wants. The rest of us will have immunity. There are many flaws in this argument. Among other things, it is based on sheer speculation 
about when the coronavirus hit, and it is based on what may be a misconception about how your immune system and mine respond to the coronavirus. But the herd immunity hypothesis' greatest flaw is that one of the people killed in order to train the immune system of the herd may be you or me. This is Howard Bloom speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Or, (laughs) want to know why, as how. And now for that infamous, sleazy, slimy, sneaky, sneezy, little off button. I think I got it. I think.